As independent Medicare brokers, we write for a variety of insurance companies throughout the country, and we write for all the different types of Medicare plans. But what's interesting, out of the last 10,000 people that we wrote and put on Medicare, 78% of those people chose the same plan. Now, different company, but the same plan type. And the question is, which one of those plans won and why? In this video, I'll show you. Now here's a graph representing the last 10,000 clients that our company added here just in the last couple of months. And uh, you'll notice down here, this is actually 0.42%, less than half percent of all people chose that plan, about 1%, 4%, uh, 5%, 11%, and almost 78% people chose that particular plan. So I'm gonna get into the details and explain each of these plans and why people select them. So of the six different types of Medicare plans um, that we wrote, in the last 10,000 applications, you'll notice at the bottom of the list is the plan F. Uh, this is a Medigap policy. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you uh, how original Medicare works with Medigap policies, just real quickly. So whenever we have uh, original Medicare, we have two parts to it. The A is the inpatient side of Medicare, the B is the outpatient side, as well as all doctor-related services, whether in or outpatient. So this is the difference. So when we stay in original Medicare, this means that Medicare pays first. Medicare doesn't pay for anything 100% other than preventive services. So when we use uh, Medicare, there's gonna be a balance for the bill. That balance is your liability, um, and we call those gaps in coverage. So that's why we get a Medigap policy to cover those. Quick review on the gaps. So if I am using Medicare A, it means that what? <clears throat> I'm in the hospital. So here's the way it works. I'm in the middle of the hospital. I'm responsible for a deductible this year of $1,600. Now that deductible could happen multiple times in the year, but that's what it costs me to go to the hospital. And then that covers me for the first 60 days in the hospital. After 60 days in the hospital, then I go into my second gap. And that is this, a $400 a day copay uh, for days um, 61 to 90. If I'm in beyond 90 days, now I go into my other uh, gap here, which is an $800 a day copay. So I'm responsible for those copays. So this is month three, that is month four, month five. Again, it doesn't happen often, uh, but when it does, as you can see, it's very expensive. The last gap on the A of Medicare is for skilled nursing. Skilled nursing is after a stroke, hip replacement, injury, fall accident, something like that. And so the rules are Medicare says for the first 20 days, I can go to skilled nursing, doesn't cost me a penny, as long as I was in the hospital 72 hours or longer before going to skilled nursing. After 20 days, now I have to start paying, and this is my third gap, I have to start paying a $200 a day copay to the skilled nursing facility, okay? And so as you can see, we have some copays here. That's the gaps on the A. The B side of Medicare, everything outpatient, labs, outpatient surgery, and also all the doctors that you see in their office or they come to see you in the hospital are gonna be paid through Medicare B. So again, we have a deductible, $226. Now the difference here, this can happen multiple times in a year. This is once in a calendar year. So you meet it one time and you're done. And after we've met the small deductible, Medicare takes the balance of the bill and they pay 80% and we're responsible for 20% called coinsurance. The last gap on the B side is called an excess charge. And this happens whenever you see a doctor that sees Medicare patients but does not take Medicare uh, reimbursement uh, amounts as payment in full and so they can legally add to the bill 15%. Most doctors don't do that, but whenever that happens, you'd be responsible to, for, to pay for it. So keep this in mind as I talk about Medigap policies, I'm not gonna rewrite this again. But what I'm teaching you is that there are six gaps in original Medicare. So when someone buys that plan F, and again, very few people did, it covers all six of the six gaps. It covers everything. A person that has an F plan should never ever see a bill. If Medicare pays first, it's full coverage. Now, the problem with that is uh, uh, a few people can buy it today because they've been phasing the app plans out. So here's the rules and why few people buy it. Anyone that is born before January 1st, 1955, which means they were for, eligible for Medicare before January 1, 2020, uh, they can still buy app plans. Anyone born after that, uh, you are ineligible to buy an app plan. You have to buy the next Medigap policy, that, which we'll talk about. But the point is, if you're born before here, you can still buy it. Again, very few people do because they're frankly not a very good value, all right? But again, that's the least popular plan uh, within the last 10,000 that we wrote, and that's why. Hey, just real quickly, if you're finding this video to be helpful, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do so, that'll let YouTube know that this is helpful information, and they'll send it out to others who also need to learn about Medicare. Now that takes 
takes us to uh, number five, uh, which is uh, five out of the, the out of the six plans, and this is what's called an MA only plan. Now, MA simply stands for Medicare Advantage plan. Now, these are called C plans. Uh, these are private health insurance companies, private health insurance companies that actually replace original Medicare for you. All right. So when it, someone enrolls into a C plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, they're still enrolled in Medicare A and B, but Medicare A and B doesn't pay any bills. Medicare actually uh, uh, pays a flat fee to the Medicare Advantage company on your behalf, about $1,000 uh, a month. And now they're responsible for you, less your copay. So the point is, when someone enrolls in a Medicare a a Advantage only plan, here's the key to this, only means it is going to cover inpatient and outpatient services only, which means there is no prescription drug coverage is part of that. It's just not, it's not included. And so the reason few people choose this is because most people are going to want a drug plan as part of their Medicare Advantage plan. But those that don't have to have a drug plan can get an MA only plan. And quite frankly, it's a very good option for three groups of people. Anyone that's eligible for VA benefits and you have a good benefit through the VA. Anyone that's retired military that has TRICARE for life, it's a good option, an MA only plan. Anyone who retired from the government, they have what's called FEHB. Those three groups of people uh, can really benefit from an MA only plan uh, because why? They can get all their prescriptions through those systems there, they don't have to get them through uh, a Part D plan because these are considered credible coverage plans. But again, not real common, but again, some people chose it because it was a good fit, especially those with VA benefits, retired military, TRICARE, or retired civil service. All right, number four of the list of six. Uh, would be uh, what's called a Medigap plan in. Now, I've already taught you about the gaps in Medicare. Remember, Medicare A is inpatient. We had three gaps. Medicare B also had three gaps. You're responsible for those. Remember, the F plan covered them all. <laughs> Remember, F plan covered six of six, covered all gaps. But here's what happens if you decide to get that plan in. All right, so we have those six gaps. And what, look, what the in plan will cover is four of the six gaps only covers four. The one you would be responsible for, you would have to meet your Part B deductible, which is once a year, $226. And if you ever went to a doctor that added the 15%, that excess charge, you're responsible for those if you get that plan in. And that's the reason why a lot of people simply don't choose those because uh, they don't like the, 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 the responsibility of excess if they happen to go to a doctor that charges excess. And again, there's eight states where they can't charge excess. And someone who's in that state may say, hey, I'm happy with the implant because I know that can't happen in my state. Now, if you move away or you go outside the state for services, you could still be subject to an excess charge. The other thing on the end plan that some people don't like is every time you go to the doctor, you're subject to up to a $20 copay and you go to the emergency room. Again, you're subject to up to a $50 copay. Now, some people like the end plan because the end plan is going to be lower. And so they're willing to take on the risk of excess and a few of the copays. And again, there is no right or wrong, good or bad. That's not the issue. The issue is uh, only about 4% about 4% of people in our uh, last 10,000 clients uh, like the in plan. So it's a Medigap um, uh, plan in. Now, also keep this in mind, there's a premium. And those premiums are going to vary, folks. We're a nationwide company, so I'm just kind of broad brushing this. But most of the in plans are going to be somewhere between about 90 to, you know, maybe $100 uh, on a monthly basis. Okay? And so it's going to cover four of the six gaps. You're responsible for two of the gaps plus a couple of copays. All right, that brings us to uh, the third of the six plans, uh, most common in the last 10,000, and that is an MAPD. Now, we've already talked about Medicare Advantage. Remember, these are the C plans. Uh, these are the replacement plans, uh, the private health insurance company options that's replacing original Medicare for you. So uh, here we have an MAPD, which means it now includes a prescription drug. Remember that MA only was inpatient and outpatient only. Remember, vets, TRICARE, and uh, FEHB can get that, but the, uh, the general population should not get an MA-only plan. They're going to want to have a prescription drug plan embedded, and that's what the MAPD, uh, MAPD plan does. Medicare Advantage, prescription drug, and it's all in one. And so as you can see, we had 511 enrollees enrolled in this. But here's the key. Why so few? Well, one of the reasons for this is because this is an HMO. Medicare Advantage plan. Every Advantage plan is going to have a network, either a PPO or an HMO. And so some select the HMO. So when I describe the HMO uh, network, uh, describe it with a box. 
all right? So here is the issue with an HMO network. Some companies require if you take an HMO plan that you have to have a referral from your primary care doctor to see a specialist, okay? The other thing, if you decided that you needed to go out of your network, you cannot do that on an HMO plan. The only way you can do it is if it's an emergency situ situation or an urgent care situation. Then you can go out of network. But if you go out of your network on an HMO plan, you absolutely will pay for it 100% of the expenses because that HMO does not allow you to go out of the network except in those two exceptions. Again, that's why few people enroll in them. Now, some do, and here's why. Because on the HMO plan, what they do is you will notice that you have lower out-of-pocket lower out of pocket, which means we have lower copays uh, that we have to pay to see our providers. We also have lower max out of pockets. And this is something that the plan sets every year. Uh, that on an HMO plan, it's gonna be anywhere from maybe $3,000 to $5,000 max out of pocket. So the way Advantage plans work is you usually have a zero premium to uh, the, the Advantage company. Now we're still enrolled in Medicare, so I still gotta pay Medicare, uh, my Part B premium, but I usually don't have to pay the insurance company uh, any kind of a premium is zero premium because instead what I do is I pay as I go and my pay as I go system is going to be lower on the HMO than a typical uh, Medicare Advantage PPO plan uh, and again I'm going to have a lower max out of pocket so that if it's three to five thousand dollars I'm done after that plan uh, covers everything and then those max out of pockets reset every January so you can see uh, a little over 500 people of our 10,000 selected an option. And then that takes us to our second most uh, common option, and that is, again, an MAPD plan, one of those C plans, private health insurance company, um, alternative to original Medicare, replacing a, a Medicare. But notice, this one is a different network. It's now the PPO network, so let me explain. So we have two types of networks, HMOs, and we have PPOs. So here's the HMO and here's the PPO. So whenever you have a C plan, what happens is you have a private health insurance company that contracts with doctors and hospitals and outpatient facilities, and they contract with them and negotiate to let them know this is what we'll pay you to, to treat our patients that are enrolled in the plan. And so what happens is the reason the HMO network is a smaller network is because uh, the HMO uh, providers do not get paid as much as the PPO. <laughs> so you'll have more providers that are willing to be in the PPO. Now keep this in mind. Uh, some Sometimes doctors take no Advantage plans. Some will take maybe both. Some say, no, nah, we don't like the HMO reimbursement, but we'll take the PPO. It pays us a little bit more. It's totally voluntary. Some will take both. Some take one. Some take none of these. All right? And so, again, that's another issue with Advantage plans. Well, the reason some people don't take them is because they don't like the fact they're going to be limited on their providers. Now, one of the good things about a PPO, if we go with the Advantage plan, is we can go out of our network. So uh, if I stay in my network, it's gonna be a little cheaper, but if I go out, I can do so. Remember here, only urgent care and emergency room. Here, I can go out to any provider that takes Medicare. That's gonna cost me a little bit more money. If I stay in my network, it may cost me $5,000 max for the year. If I go out, it may be 10,000 for the year. Uh, but the point is, at least I have that flexibility. And again, that's why uh, more people are willing to enroll in that PPO uh, than the HMO, all right? And again, most of the PPO plans uh, throughout the country, we still gotta pay Medicare. Remember our 164.90, but typically you're gonna find a zero uh, premium plan, and it also will include what? It's again, inpatient, outpatient, prescription drugs all in one, and they also have some very unique perks uh, that are thrown in on the Advantage plans as well. And again, we had, what, a little over 1,100, almost 1,200 people that chose that of the last 10,000. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, I want to invite you to go right up here and actually click on a link that will uh, allow you to watch what I call the Medicare Essentials Workshop. It's a workshop that I did that really is going to show you everything you need to know about Medicare uh, from A to Z, uh, how to enroll, when to enroll, and uh, the plan options for you. So, so go to that link and check it out. And then that brings us to the plan that actually most people enrolled, in fact, uh, far greater, uh, almost 78%. So 7,768 people enrolled in a Medigap Plan G. Now remember, again, we have A and B, original Medicare, whenever we have a Medigap policy, what do we have? We have three gaps on the A and we have three gaps on the B. Remember that F plan covered six of six gaps. Uh, not a lot of people can't buy it, so most people don't choose that. Remember that in plan covered four of the six gaps, plus we had some copays as a part of that. And uh, most people just don't like that additional liability in the copays. And so the most common plan right now is the G plan. So how does it work? Well, it covers five of the six gaps. Uh, so it's almost like the F, other than your one deductible, one one uh, gap, and that is your Medicare. 
Part B deductible. Part B deductible. And this year, that is $226. And again, it's for the calendar year, and those reset every January. Remember, the A deductible could happen multiple times in a year. This one cannot. Once a year, you'd be responsible for the first $226 of anything that's billed to the Medicare B side, the outpatient side, the doctor's side of Medicare. And so after uh, we've met that, that uh, small B deductible, everything's going to be covered. And frankly, that's what people like. They don't want surprises. They want to know they can pay a premium, get rid of most of the liability. Once a year, they'll pay the B deductible. So the way it works whenever I have a G plan, number one, I've got to be enrolled in A and B. Remember, I got to pay my premium, $164.90. Now, keep in mind, listen, if um, uh, you uh, are a single filer and above $97,000 uh, uh, income, modified adjusted gross, you'll pay more. If you're a couple filing a joint return and you're above $194,000, you will pay more. That's 7% of the population pays more. 93% are below those income thresholds, and so you pay $164.90 for your Part B, comes out of your Social Security check, or they'll bill you for that quarterly, or you can set up a bank draft if you'd like to do that as well uh, until you start taking Social Security. Then I have my G premium. And folks, again, we're a nationwide company, okay? I'm just trying to kind of broad stroke this so you get an idea. These Advantage plans, on average, are going to be the G plan, going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $125, give or take, okay? And this, of course, would be on a monthly basis. Now, one of the reasons that people like supplemental plans, whether that's an F, a G, or an N, or any of the letters, is this. We get to add, then, our own prescription drug plan. And those can range anywhere from $7 to the average, I think it's about $25, and again, on a monthly basis. So people like the fact that they can pick out their drug plan. Remember on the Advantage? Uh, the Advantage company includes it for you. And sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're mediocre. But here, we get to pick our own drug plan. And now we have the option to uh, get a new plan uh, year to year during open enrollment. If my meds go up or go down, I can change those plans. And so people like the flexibility of that. Now, a couple other things uh, why people selected this plan is this. This is very important. You have no pre-authorizations when you have any supplemental plan, F, G, or N, no pre-authorizations. What that means is a pre-authorization says that the doctor has recommended you get some kind of a service, and the insurance company uh, has the, the final say so. The insurance company has to agree and approve before they'll pay. And that's exactly the way it works with Advantage plans. You have pre authorizations on about 70 to 72 percent of all services. Now, you don't have to have a pre authorization to see your primary care doctor, get some labs and simple things. But I can guarantee if you need a CAT scan, an MRI, a, a PET scan, uh, a knee replacement, hip replacement, uh, skilled nursing stay, any kind of an uh, inpatient hospital stay, non emergency, that has to be pre-approved by that Medicare Advantage company. So the doctor submits what they, uh, the care they, they are recommending, but the Advantage company has to agree to that, uh, approve that before they pay for it. And sometimes they give immediate approval, and sometimes they delay the approval, and sometimes they flat deny that. And so that's one reason why people select supplemental plans, because when we have a supplemental plan, no matter what of the letters you choose from or whatever company you choose, that company has no say-so whatsoever. There's no pre-authorizations with supplemental plans. And again, that's one of the reasons they're very, very popular. The second reason they're popular is this. They are permanent. <laughs> Now, you got to keep this in mind. There's a, a key time to buy a supplemental plan, and that's when you first go on Medicare. Let's say I'm going to go on Medicare 5-1-2023. Here's what happens. I can apply for a med sub plan normally three to six months in advance. But after I've started my Medicare, I'm in this period of time. So again, I can apply in advance. But if I don't, I still have a period of time that lasts six months six months where if I want that G or that F or that N, whatever I want, that insurance company has to take you. We call that a guaranteed issue product. They have to take you. No underwriting, no health questions asked. They have to take all your pre-existing conditions, six months of your B date, before or after. But after that, in all but four states, if you want to get a supplemental plan after that, now you have to go through medical underwriting. We have to ask you 30 health questions, check your medications, get a statement from your doctor. And now if your health is bad, now uh, that insurance company has the right to deny the application. They do not have to approve you. They must during those six months window. So many people do it because they don't want to miss that opportunity where they can have that supplemental plan and they can have that plan for the rest of their life. When you get a supplemental plan, it's tied to you. If you move from, let's say, Denver, Colorado to Dallas, Texas, or you live in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, and you're going to go to Cincinnati, Ohio, take it with you because supplemental plans are totally portable. They're permanent. Just like A and B is for life, your supplemental plan is for life. Drug plan, year to time. 
but supplemental plans are written for life. You have the same coverage anywhere you go, all right? Then secondly, and lastly, also network. Providers, let me just kind of squeeze in and over here. When it comes to supplemental plans, you can go to any provider that takes Medicare. You don't have to worry about an HMO or a PPO plan. You can go to any Medicare that accepts Medicare, all right? And so again, another reason why most people chose that plan because they don't want the limitations. They don't want to have to worry about in a network, out of network type of benefits, HMOs and PPOs and those network changes. Any provider that takes Medicare will take your supplemental plan of choice, all right? And so you can see overwhelmingly that's what people chose and that's why they like the fact that they can get rid of liability, they have no surprise bills, go to any doctor that takes Medicare, never a pre-authorization, and that policy is tied to them for the rest of their life. As long as you pay your premium, it's yours. All right, so 10,000 recent applications. And as you can see, the majority of those went with that Plan G. Now, folks, uh, I'm not saying that you have to go with the Plan G. I'm just saying to you that's what we've written here in the last several months. And so all these plans are good. In fact, I will tell you that there really is no bad Medicare plan, but what there is is a bad fit. Sometimes people don't realize that if they do take one of these Advantage plans, MAPD plans, that after being on that plan for a year, two, three, four years, if they ever want to get off of it and pick up a supplemental plan, now they have to go through medical underwriting in all but four states. Remember, uh, Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, and Maine, anytime um, uh, during the open enrollment season. But 46 states, if you want to make that switch, now you have to medically qualify. So that's what I'm talking about. So someone had a lot of serious health problems and they're concerned about that. Then again, there could be something here that's not a good fit for them. I told you here on the MA only plan. Hey, I don't think that's a good fit except for people that have VA, uh, FEHB, or TRICARE for Life. I think it's a great fit for people like that uh, because they can get their prescriptions filled in, in another situation. Again, the Medigap F plan, very few can get it because it's tied to your birthday. If you're born before January 1st, 55, you can get it. After that, you can't. So again, that would be off limits. So the, the point is, uh, it's not about a bad plan, it's the best fit for you. And that's why you gotta work with someone that'll take the time to explain all these differences to make sure that when you enroll in that plan, you're confident that you have made the best choice for your situation.